Good morning, good morning, good morning, Capri Compassion family. We are so excited to have you, our family, our friends, those who are watching us this morning. Thank you so much for coming into our Facebook Live this morning. We thank you for allowing us to come into your living rooms, into your bedrooms, into your car, to your kitchen, wherever you are watching us right now. And before we get started, we ask you to do a couple of things for me this morning. First, I want you to make sure that you like this post and that you also share it. Those of you who are doing watch parties, please let your friends, your neighbors, your, your family know that we are live. Calvary Compassion Church is live and ready to start our service this morning. And we want to just say a very special greeting to all of our mothers and mothers-to-be out there this morning. Happy Mother's Day. We are excited to be celebrating both mothers and Jesus this morning. So praise to Can we give God a praise this morning? Hallelujah. As well as giving God a praise for just waking us up this morning. Amen. One thing I love about Facebook is that the rain does not stop us. So even though it is raining, I thank God for you this morning that you pressed your way yes, yes. and you rolled on out that bed uh -huh. this morning and you clicked on that Facebook Live this morning. So again, I want to see the likes, the hearts, the shares, the hugs, the smiles, all of that rolling across the screen Amen. as we are having services. Also, you can like and comment. Uh, if you have prayer requests, you can submit those while we are live in the comment section. There are prayer counselors that are praying as you submit those prayer requests. Amen. If you uh, want to submit prayer requests later on, we'll tell you how to do that later on in the service. But I'm going to ask you again to like the post, share the post. I want you to get those hearts going, get the likes going, and we're just going to enjoy Jesus this morning. Let's go to God this morning in prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning. But number one, for the mothers this morning, we thank you for all of those that you have placed in our lives, Lord God. Even those that have gone on, Father, we thank you for our moms this morning. As we celebrate our Mother's Day today, we celebrate their day, we honor them, we recognize them. But Father, we also want to honor and recognize you this morning. Today is your day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and to be exceedingly glad in it, oh Father. We just ask as we get ready to go into the praise and the worship this morning that you will receive our songs of gratitude, our songs of worship, that as we open our hearts to you, Lord Jesus, that you will hear what we're singing, Father. And when the words are not enough to tell you, how much we love you. We want you to continue to listen to our hearts, oh Father. As we lift up holy hands before you this morning in adoration and praise, we just ask you, Lord God, to go into that living room, go into that bedroom, go into the kitchen right now. For Father, we know where your spirit is, there is liberty this morning. And we thank you this morning for being saved by grace. For if it was not for your grace and your mercy, Lord, we don't know where we would be, oh God. But we thank you for life and we thank you for liberty in the spirit of God. And Father, we pray that as this broadcast is going out and continues to be broadcasted throughout the annals of time and history, Father, that each word that is spoken and each word that is sung will minister to the needs of the people at the time that they need to hear it. We thank you for it and we bless you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God a round of applause if you believe that this morning. The song says, Saved by Grace. Tell your neighbor this morning. I don't know who your neighbor is or where your neighbor is located, whether they're on the side of the bed or they're on the side of the, 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 the yeah. sofa or if they're at the lunch table, at the breakfast room, wherever you are this morning, tell them I'm glad to be saved I by grace this morning. And I want to welcome the Calvary Compassion Praise and Worship Hallelujah. Team this morning as we sing this song. Amen. Come on, clap your hands.
morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came to give Hallelujah. thanks unto the Lord for he's good. How many of y'all know he's good this morning? Yes, yes, yes. Go give yes. thanks unto yes. the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. Despite all that's going on right now, he's still good. Yes, he is. Come on, like they used to say in the Baptist church, say God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
at the moment. Amen. Um, again, there is a text message that has all of our little slides on it. If you are a part of the loop, then you are included in getting that information. And if you would like to receive that information um, via the loop and you want to get plugged in and connected to Calvary Compassion Church, I'm going to ask you to text the word loop, L-O-O-P, to the number 772 22904. Again, if you want to get plugged in and you want to receive the latest information and updates from Calvary Compassion Church, please text the word LOOP, L O O P, to 772 22904. Now, when you receive the uh, link that comes, I need you to follow the link and then I need you to fill in all of the prompts that come with that link. Amen. Um, and when you fill in that information, we will make sure that we include you on the information that's coming out. Amen. Um, if you are uh, a member and you've been coming for a while and your information has changed, I need you to still go in and populate the loop and give us your up-to-date information because, of course, that is the way that you can stay informed on the happenings that's going on at Calvary Compassion Church. Amen. While we are apart from one another, we're not meeting at Centennial like we normally would, but we are coming via the internet, but you can still continue to give. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of opportunities and a lot of different ways that you can give. The first being the texting to give. The text to give number is 772 291 You simply text the word give and then the amount. If you make a mistake, because as I always love to say Sunday after Sunday, that our smartphones are not always so smart. So if you make a mistake or your phone doesn't act right, text the word refund to the same number, 772-291-0111, and your money and your transaction will be reversed. Amen. You should be receiving an email if it's your first time doing it just follow the prompts it's very easy to do you can also go in and set up your giving on uh, breeze through our website which is www.calvarycpc.com there's many different ways to give and they are all listed on the home page you can also mail in the address uh, is there if you want to mail in a money order a check um, please do not send cash through the mail amen but if you do want to send a check or a money order or a cashier's check made out to Calvary Compassion Church you can do so the address is on the main website which again is www.calvarycpc.com if you want to give through cash app if you have that app and you want to give through the cash app our handle is the same as our website it is Calvary CPC you do not put the dot com Calvary CPC amen we have prayer requests that I hope that are coming through on the line in the comment section but if you haven't put in a prayer request or a prayer need in the comment section just yet in the service I want you to go and uh, download our app, Pray.com. Again, the app is called Pray.com. When you download the app, it is a free app. You can get it from the iOS store or Android store. It is a free app. Again, if you see a paid version, that is not the one I want you to download. I want you to get the one that is free. But you download it and then search for our community, which is Calvary Compassion Church. Once you do the, the search for our community on the Pray.com, you will note that there are people that are located all over the world. There's people in Ohio and Texas and Alabama, Georgia, California. You know that song, I've Been Everywhere. We got prayer warriors everywhere, man. And I want you guys to become a part of that. So if any time, 24-7, you need to put in a prayer request, you can do that through Pray.com. There are prayer uh, counselors and just different people in the church, prayer uh, partners and members that are waiting to pray for you as well as we want to hear when God has done something special in your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, I cannot see the number for praying, but we do have prayer on Wednesday uh, at noon. Uh, if you plug into the loop, which is 772-200-2904, you will receive the instructions on how to join the prayer call on Wednesdays. Amen. We lift up the country. Amen. We lift up our state and local government. We lift up our first responders, our firefighters, our policemen, uh, EMTs, paramedics. 
nurses, doctors, everybody who was on the front line responding to and treating and helping to eradicate COVID and the coronavirus. We pray for not only them, but we pray for our church body. We pray for the lost. We pray for whatever need there is that the Lord gives us. And for you to be a part of that would be a blessing. So again, if you are part of the loop, amen, you will receive the instructions on how to get on the noon call. Now, those of you who are just anxious and ready to get on that prayer call, please do not call in prior to 12 o'clock. If you are on the line at 11.55, you are too early. Amen. I will say it again. Please wait until noon before you dial the number so that we can all connect together. Amen. And when the beep happens, make sure you announce yourself. Amen. Unless, of course, you are late to prayer and they already pray. <laughs> we don't want you to interrupt the prayer to say that who you are. We know you're there. And we thank God for you being with us because we understand, you know, lunch breaks come at different times. Some people are still working, but you can sign on anytime from 12 to 1 and get to be a part of that prayer. And let me tell you, there have been some powerful prayers that have been going out on that prayer call. I also want to let you guys know that we are Zooming in our men's Bible study and Zooming in our women's Bible study. You can Zoom us and connect with us on Tuesdays uh, for the men at 7 and it goes from 7 to 8 and for the women on Wednesdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Now again, if you are a part of the loop, you will receive the instructions on how to sign into the Zoom. Amen. Amen. Um, we want to uh, just recognize again all of our mothers. Again, we are so thankful for our mothers on Mother's Day today. We celebrate each and every one of you, even though we as a church family are not able to come together to give you those hugs and to give you those kisses that we want to give you. We send them through the internet. Amen. And like uh, my wife likes to say to her students, we're going to air hug and air five. And we're going to air kiss right now because we don't want coronavirus. Amen. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to pray over our offering. Amen. I thank you for everyone who is able to give. Amen. We know every uh, amount, any amount that you give goes towards helping people in our community who are hurting right now. We know that even though there's a lot of places that have opened up to 25% capacity with being able to serve people as far as restaurant communities and um, stores and all of these different things, we know that we're not fully back on our feet. So, you know, if you have a need, by all means, contact the church. We want to be a help at a time when people have a need. Amen. That's what we're here for, to love on you. Don't allow pride to let you miss out on a blessing. Somebody say amen. But as we're praying right now, we're going to ask God's blessing on what's being given. Amen. doesn't matter what the amount is. Amen. Because if you don't have to give, it's okay. It's okay because you can give in your prayer time. You can give by encouraging your neighbor. I said every week, somebody that you run into when you're going out shopping with your mask on, they need a word of encouragement. They may not be able to see your smile, but they can hear hope in your voice. Say amen, somebody. They can respond to the light that they see in your eye. Amen. So you can give in many different ways. Amen. You can uh, talk to a neighbor. You know, you notice your neighbor might be down in this time. You know, encourage them and let them know that everything is going to be all right. There are people who are losing loved ones. Amen. We can be a peacemaker and pray for peace in that family. Pray for peace for peace for those loved ones because we know a lot of them have had to say goodbye uh, through Facebook and through face uh, time and, and had to say goodbye through uh, the, the phone. You know, they haven't been able to go into the hospital. So, you know, there's things that we can do if we don't have financial means to give. We can give of our time. Amen. Come on, somebody. Say amen. I know you're agreeing with me out there. Put the lights in the hearts out if you know what I'm talking about. Amen. There's people right now that have lost their moms that they need a word of encouragement today. They are not able to celebrate with their mom. They know where their mom is. Mom's in heaven. But we can be an encouraging soul for them and speak into them. And we can send them love. And you can just pop in on their Facebook. Pop in on their social media. Text them. Let them know that we're thinking about them, that we love them this morning, that they're not alone. Amen. So let's go to the Lord and we'll bless our offering. Then we'll come back with a little bit more of worship this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to give. Father, we thank you, oh God, because you are our source. And we thank you that you allow us to resource things through you, Lord God. We thank you for blessing us, God. You say you love a cheerful giver. Father, you didn't even specify what the giver was giving. You just said you love a cheerful giver. So if we can give a smile, 
if we can give uh, hope and love, if we can give peace to someone, if we can give an encouraging word to someone and we do it with a cheerful heart, Father, you are pleased. You, you said in your word, how do they know that we are yours? And you said they will know us by the way we love. And if we love, they know that we are your children. And we thank you for being sons and daughters this morning, oh God. We bless you. We bless the offering as it's coming in, oh God. We thank you, God, for receiving the offering, oh God, and multiplying it and allowing us to be able to work in our community and to meet the needs of the people, Father. As we are Calvary Compassion Church, we can have compassion on those of us who are going through it who may not be as stable as we are, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for sustaining us and keeping us. We bless you, Lord God, even though we're apart, we can still feel one another's presence as we're speaking online to one another in the comments and encouraging one another. Father, we thank you for that because, Lord, we don't know how that's sustaining someone right now. We don't know how it's encouraging someone's heart right now. But, Lord, you know. You know what we're going through. And, Father, I thank you for being a guiding light right now, Father. We need you, O oh God, to lead us and to guide us. We pray for our country. We pray for our leadership, Father, that they will make wise decisions, O oh God, to help bring us out of this calamity, O oh God. But ultimately, God, we know you are in control and that we are in your hands for you have the whole world in your hands and we bless what you are doing oh god and we know that in the end you will always receive the glory and we thank you for it in jesus name amen come on praise and worship team we're going to just bless the lord this morning hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus i call him holy hallelujah. and faithful and righteous hallelujah. and he's a healer and he's our savior and he's awesome and mighty. Hallelujah. There is no one like our Lord this morning. Hallelujah. And when we get to the part of the song where you can testify to what God has been in your life, I want you to just sing it out just Hallelujah. as loud and just as strong. Because listen, y'all at home, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You ain't going to be disturbing nobody but your family. And your family love you. Amen. So Hallelujah. you can make your joyful noise. Amen. Amen. And won't nobody talk about you now. Amen. They talk about you. You just tell them what the words say. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Come on. So I'm not going to let a rock. Y'all know my word. Okay. I ain't let a rock cry out for me. So when we get to a part of this song that testifies and identifies to you and your spirit, I want you to sing it out loud and strong this morning. As we worship, as we Hallelujah. sing, I call you faithful.
hallelujah, because of who he is and not because of what he does. We will worship him. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on today. Father God, we pray that the words that we have sung, Father, that the songs that we have lifted up have been acceptable to you, O oh God. Lord, we pray that it has gone up to heaven as a sweet, sweet aroma, as an anointed vessel that we've sung, Father, as you have given us the utterance and the ability and the capability to do. Father, we thank you for all that have joined us. We bless you for what you're doing in the lives of our people, in the lives of people that we don't even know, Father. There's someone that's tuning in right now who's never heard of Calvary Compassion. But Father, our goal is to point them towards heaven, towards our Father, and towards the Son, Jesus, and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work of salvation in their life this morning. Bless our pastor as he comes forth with the word, and may you be edified and glorified in all that is done. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Good morning to our Calvary Compassion family and those of you who are watching uh, our live stream via Facebook. Let me say happy Mother's Day to you all, the wonderful and lovely moms out there. Whether you uh, have breakfast prepared for you and brought to your bed this morning or you're going to have lunch prepared or dinner prepared, just know moms, you don't have to do the dishes today. We will wait until tomorrow and you can do them then. So happy Mother's Day, and uh, happy Mother's Day to my mommy, Sammy Moses. I know that you're tuning in. I love you very much, and I will see you later on today. For those of you who have your Bibles or your mobile devices, please go ahead and open up your apps and your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, and we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 38 today. Once again, for those of you who may be watching for your first time, uh, we teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse through the Bible. We started in Luke chapter 1, verse 1, and we will work our way all the way to Luke chapter 24, the last verse, and then we will start the book of Revelation. I believe we should be there by the end of the month. We will start the book of Revelation, so share with your family, with your friends, and uh, I love you guys so, so very much, and I miss seeing you and I miss hugging you. Uh, for now, we have to give you the Wakanda internet hug. I love you. And you all know ain't nothing that you can do about it. So as we get into our Bible study today, uh, this is known as the Olivet Discourse. And the reason why it's called the Olivet Discourse is because Jesus taught uh, his disciples on the Mount of Mount Olives. Uh, this is going to be some of uh, the end time prophecies uh, I get a lot of questions regarding this portion of scripture. Uh, hopefully it will answer a lot of your questions. And as we get into the book of Revelations, we're going to see how all this is played out. And so, uh, once again, open up your Bibles or your, your app. Get your cup of coffee, a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, and uh, we're going to dig into the Word. Let's pray first. Father, we come before you, Lord God. Father, you said that we're to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. So, Lord, we want to seek you first, Lord, on a day in which we recognize our mothers. Lord, we know that there is no other love that succeeds a mother's love other than your own. Uh, Lord, I just pray for all of the mothers who are, who are watching and who are tuned in, Lord God. And, Father, we don't want to forget about those mothers uh, who have transitioned and they are now with you, Lord God. Father, as we celebrate our moms who are here, Lord, we also remember those uh, individuals who are will be remembering their mom who is with you. So, Lord, I just ask for our compassionate heart, and, and Lord, our heart breaks with theirs as they, uh, they smile and they mourn at the same time. Uh, but, Lord, right now we ask that you clear our hearts and you clear our minds, Lord, that we're able to hear exactly what it is that you would have to say to us as individuals, Lord, as well as your church. Father, we thank you that we can open up your word, Lord God, and, and Father, just have you to speak to us, Lord. And, and Father, as we learn more about you and your nature, and Lord, we apply these things to our lives. Father, there is uh, no one like you in all of the earth. We, we serve the true and living God. And, Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here and those who are listening uh, all over. And, Lord, uh, we just give you honor, praise, and glory. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Now, for all of you who love God, right now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to hit that heart button just to show how much you love the Lord. I know that you love him and you can, can profess that. Uh, but while we're streaming on the Internet... Hey, hit those heart buttons just to let the Lord know that you love him because we know that it was he who first loved us. 
Now, you can cross-reference this, uh, this uh, block of scripture over in Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter, and also in Mark's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Matthew's Gospel goes into a little bit more detail, uh, but still the same message is going to be conveyed. Now, let's pick it up in verse number 5. It says, Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and, and donations, he said, what you have to understand is this is called Herod's temple. We know that it was Ezra who began the rebuilding process, but Herod, who was a who was a part Jew and he wanted to be a friend of the people, he just went and gleaned out the temple. It was known as one of the wonders of the world at the time. And Jewish historian Josephus tells us that the gold that was overlaid in the temple, that when the sun hit it just right, you couldn't even look at it because of the brightness of it. And then for those Jews and those individuals who would be traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover and different feasts, you know, talk about the marble that was that was in the temple that when you looked at it from a distance, it looked like it was it was snow on it. And it was just a remarkable temple. And so as we get into the study, we're going to see what the disciples thought of those things. Verse number six. It says, These things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And we know that in AD 70, uh, Roman general Titus went into Jerusalem and he uh, overtook the city and the temple was destroyed. I'll go into a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. Verse 7, it says, So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be, and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Verse number 8, And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. We know that there was individuals who had come saying that they were the Messiah. We know that individuals after Jesus' day was, uh, stated that there was Messiah, and we know that there's individuals even in our day who stated that, that they were the Messiah. We know down in Miami, uh, there was a gentleman who proclaimed to, to be the Messiah, uh, but he is now dead, and I, I wonder how that worked out for him. I wonder what was the first thing that he thought when he transitioned from this side and opened his side and opened his eyes up in you know the afterlife, what he thought about him being the Messiah then. Inquiry minds want to know. Verse number nine. Here we go. And here's where I get a lot of questions about what we're currently facing as it relates to uh, eschatology. Eschatology is just a fancy word meaning the end times. And so here we go, verse number 9. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Verse 10. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. Now, those things listed here, the wars, the rumors of wars, the commotions, nation rise against nation, you know, the pestilences or diseases, listen, those things are not the sign in order for Christ to return. Once again, those things are not the signs because we know since Christ's uh, birth, his, his life and his death and his resurrection, there have been many people, right, who claim to be the Messiah. There have been wars and rumors of wars and diseases and all those things from the day of Christ to our present day. I think it's safe to say. And listen, mockers come and they, they taunt us in our face saying, you know, where is the coming of your Messiah? Don't worry, he's coming. And you better believe that. But, but as it relates to those things that are listed, those things are not the sign. Well, what would be the sign? Over in Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter in the 8th verse. Remember, Matthew is telling the same account in his gospel. But he has a different verse in Matthew 24, verse 8. And that verse says, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. And some of your Bibles may have the beginning of birth pangs. Now, I have never given birth to a child. I think it's safe to say. But, you know, I've been around my wife and I've been around other ladies who have given birth. Matter of fact, my niece just gave birth to a, a, a son on Sunday. I mean, on Tuesday. 
And so when I talked to her on Sunday, she talked about how the contractions hadn't really set in. I think uh, on Sunday when I talked to her, she was a little over one centimeter. Uh, but as those things progressed, and they progressed quickly, she gave birth to a son on Tuesday. And so once again, as Jesus is talking about these things, once again, the signs are not the things listed, like wars and the rumor, rumors of wars, nation against nation. But listen, here is the sign. Those things will happen at a much faster rate. And, and if we go back and we look throughout the annuals of history, we can see that those things continue to happen, but now they are happening so, so very fast that we can hardly keep up with them. Now, just to, to go back and look over the pandemics of the century, or the past century, we can see starting in, in 1918 with the swine flu, which, and this is only the American statistics. In 1918, the swine flu, 675,000 Americans Die. And then we see in 1957, notice the time gap, 1918 to 1957, and all this information is from the CDC. So in 1957, we had the Asian flu, where we had 116,000 U.S. deaths. Then 1957 to 1968, we had the Hong Kong flu, and the Hong Kong flu, 100,000 U.S. deaths. And then we had in 1980, we had the AIDS pandemic, where you had 675,000 deaths and that, that number is still growing. And then we have 2009, we had the H1N1, where 12,000 U.S. deaths. And then now we have, in 2020, we have the COVID-19. And as of yesterday, there were 78,986 deaths. And so what you can see, and just using the pestilences or the diseases or the pandemics, we can see from 1918, and this is just US, U.S. alone with those deaths, but remember our pandemic, covers the entire world, and epidemic covers only a, a geographical area. Pandemic, once again, covers the entire world. So we can see that our pandemics over the last 20 years have begun to speed up and speed up. How many of you still remember that there was a, a hurricane last year that almost destroyed the Bahamas? And then talk about that with uh, Puerto Rico and the earthquakes. And, and so the sign is not the things listed, the wars and the room of the wars, but it's the speed at which they happen. And I believe it's safe to say that things are happening at a much faster rate and we can look for the return of our Lord at any given moment. Are you living like that? Are you living like Jesus can come back at any moment? At any moment, the twinkling of an eye. Things could change. And listen, the only thing that we're waiting for on God's prophetic timetable to happen now is the rapture. It's the rapture. And so when you see these things, these are things that we're, he listed here are talking about the end times. Let's pick up verse number 12. Now, he says, but before all these things, before what things? Before his return and before we continue to see the, the speeding up of those events. So he's talking to his disciples. He said, before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And we know that with the early church, especially with the apostles, that they faced extreme persecution. We know that Paul went before uh, Caesar because his Roman rights were violated. And we know that he appeared before Agrippa. And, and other officials where he had an opportunity not only to for his defense of the gospel, but listen, we still have to, 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 to present the gospel to individuals, and, and we're going to be persecuted by, by individuals as well. Verse number 13, he says, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for a testimony. And so when we see all these things that are going on around us, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we're not to be fearful. We're to continue to trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. And so we're to use everything that's going on around us. When there's total chaos, we're to use it as an opportunity to share our faith. Verse 14, it says, Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or to resist. You know, it's sad to say that a lot of Bible teachers uses that portion of Scripture as an opportunity not to prepare for their teachings. 
you know, they take this out of content and say, you know what, hey, the Lord is going to give me what I need, when I need it, to teach the gospel on a Sunday morning. Well, when you read this in its context, it's not talking about for the pastors. It's talking about those individuals who, who may be persecuted for their faith and they may be brought before uh, leaders and, and individuals. That, he's talking to those individuals, hey, don't worry about what you're going to say then because I'm going to put the words in your heart and they're going to be expressed out of your mouth. Verse number 16. He says, you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be betrayed because of your love for the Lord. Now, this is one of these verses where it's not popular. You know, a lot of Bible teachers tell you all to, you know, to, to meditate on the Word of God and to put verses around your house to keep it before you. But one of those verses that we don't like is the one where Jesus said, Hey, in this world, you will have tribulation." In this world, some of you would be persecuted by your parents and by your relatives and by your friends. You know, we seem to kind of shy away from those verses. But here's the thing. We all want to be like Jesus, don't we? I want to be like Jesus, and I'm sure you want to be like Jesus. But let's, let's, let's do the math. Jesus had 12 disciples. One of them was the devil. You may have 12 friends. Just know one of them may be the devil. Then let's break it down even further. Jesus ministered to three intimately, Peter, James, and John, right? You may have those three individuals that, you know, are on your inner circle. But just know, in his time of need, only one stood by the cross. The others ran off. And so just know that in your circle of friends, if you got one good one, you're way ahead of the game. But listen, even if you don't have that one friend, the Bible says that there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, yes. and his name is Jesus. Yes. He promises to never leave us nor forsake you. And listen, before you go and you pick up that phone to call a friend, why don't you pick up that prayer and speak to Jesus? Because he has all of the answers. If you agree with that, hit the praying hands for me and put them in the comments. Jesus said this in John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In him we have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, as it relates to Jesus... And, and as it relates to us sharing our faith, listen, you can go into a crowd of people and you can say, bless Buddha, praise Allah, and Confucius says, but the minute that you and I mention the name of Jesus, people lose their dog on minds. You can say any other religious leader name, but as soon as you mention the name of Jesus, all calamity is going to break out. Why? Because number one, it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. And just think about it. Why is it that when we mention our Lord and our Savior, people get upset? Because the enemy has blinded them. You know, people are going to continue to mock us, but that's okay. Jesus said, you will have tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Verse 17. Luke chapter 21, verse 17. It says, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not one, not a hair on your head shall be lost. Wait, what? Jesus, you told me that we're going to be hated. We're be hated by parents. We're going to be hated by relatives. We're going to be hated by those folks who are in the world. But here you tell me that it's a possibility that I can lose my head or be persecuted because of my faith, but not one hair on my head shall be lost? Well, what you have to understand is that Jesus is speaking from the perspective of eternity. He's speaking from the perspective of eternity. Over in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. It says, and do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. When you and I serve the Lord with all our heart, what can man do to us? Over in Romans chapter 8, it talks about the things that 
you know, or possibly like to separate us from the love of God, but the scripture says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so what Jesus is talking about here, yeah, you may be persecuted. You, you know, you may be a martyr because of your faith. He say, although they may be able to kill a body, not one hair on your head will be lost. Why? Because Jesus is speaking from the standpoint of eternity. Verse number 19. It says, by your patience, possess your soul. Your patience, possess your soul. Over in Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. It says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Listen, as the believer, our hope has to be rooted and anchored in the Lord because everything else is fading away. Whatever calamities may be going on around us, whatever chaos may be going on around us, our hope has to be in the Lord. And then it goes on to say in verse 5 of, of, of Romans, it says, Now, may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, According to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we work, work out our patience as it relates to our salvation. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Now, Jesus is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. Verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon its people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, we know that in AD 70, we know that uh, General Titus, who was the son of the Caesar at the time, we know that they besieged Jerusalem. They surrounded Jerusalem, right? And when, in AD 70, we know that they went in and they destroyed Jerusalem. Over a million Jews were killed, and 97,000 were led into captive back to Rome. And once again, for those of you who are not familiar with the story, when it talks about not one stone of the temple shall be left standing, it's because when they conquered the city, uh, they burned down the city, and in doing so, they burned down the temple. And the gold that was overlaid the temple began to melt into the, uh, the stones of the temple. And so the, the Roman soldiers went in, and, and to, to take away all of the gold, they had to knock down every stone. And so that prophecy that Jesus made uh, probably about 38 years prior to, was completely fulfilled by Titus. Now, also what you need to understand is that, guess what? Not many Christians were, were killed during this time. Why? Because they believed the words of Jesus and they remember what he said. When you see the city getting ready to be besieged, when it's getting ready to be surrounded, it says that you should leave. And so we know that a lot of the Christians left and they migrated north across the Jordan to the city of Pelham. Let's pick up verse number 24. Let's look at that. It says, And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. What are we talking about here? Well, after being exiled from the land for thousands of years, we know that the Jewish state was miraculously reestablished in 1948, which is completely unheard of. But the Bible speaks of it over in Ezekiel. So once again, you have a prophecy that was fulfilled. In 1948, the Jews came back into Israel and they reestablished the nation itself. And then when it talks about the Gentiles, the Gentiles, which are non-Jews, still have an occupancy there. And it wasn't until 1968 that Israel controlled Jerusalem. But even from that day until now, the Temple Mount is being controlled by Arab nations. And so the city of Jerusalem somewhat is still under control of, by the Gentiles or the Arab nation. Let's pick up verse number 25, Luke chapter 21. He says, and there will be signs in the sun. Now, what he's doing is he's going back now from 
speaking to the disciples about the temple, to where the temple was going to be destroyed in the AD 70. Now he's going into the end times once again. He says, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, the stress of nation with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing, then from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken, then we will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And so all those things just listed there, they are, happen at the, the second coming of Christ, right? When you look at what's going around us today, listen, we're not in the tribulation. We're not in the tribulation. Why? Once again, because the church is still here. We know that when we get to the book of Revelations before the, the world ended the tribulation period, the saints will be snatched up. We will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. And then you have the seven-year tribulation, which are these things that are listed here. And then when Jesus comes back with his church. Once again, the rapture is when Jesus comes back for his church. The second coming is when Jesus comes back with his church. Verse 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. Now, typically when you see fig trees mentioned in the Bible, it usually refers to the nation of Israel. But here, it's not talking about the nation of Israel. Jesus is just using it as an example to show that when we see uh, fruit begin to bud, we know that the season is near. Verse 29. Then he spoke to them a parable, look at the fig trees and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. Verse 31. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, underline or circle that, highlight however you want to do it. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things takes place. So what generation are, is Jesus talking about here? You know, there's a, there's a, a, a lot going on within the, the, the Christianity that talks about, well, this generation refers to um, a set time period. For those individuals who may have been born when uh, Israel came back into its own as a nation, that those individuals won't see death before Jesus Christ returns. That's not what this is teaching. All right. Uh, what this is teaching is that when you look up the word generation in the original language, in the Greek lang language, it says generia. And, and what that means is it can mean uh, descendants of common ancestor. It can also mean a set of people born at the same time. Or it's the period of time occupied by such a set of people, often in the sense of successive sets of people. Uh, and then it says, I cannot be said without further ado, therefore, the genea necessarily means a generation, and that's from a commentary by Pate. And so the generation that he's talking about, could it be us? It's possible. But it's talking about the generation who is on the earth during the tribulation period that, you know what, when they see Christ come back, talking about that generation will not die. Jesus did not refer to his own generation here and that of his disciples, but of the generation that sees those signs. Once again, in the latter part, when it talks about the, the, you're going to see the signs in the sky, and it's going to be talking about, you know, the great tribulation. You know, it's, it's easy to look at now, especially with what's going on with COVID-19. And then you also, how many of you have heard the stories about the, uh, these killer hornets? You know, so it's easy to think that, you know, we're in the last days. No, we're not. Things are bad, but they're not as bad as they're going to be when the Lord completely removes his hand from the earth. You know what? They may be killer hornets right now. But listen, if they're still around during the tribulation period, they're going to hurt far more than they hurt now. And there, the scripture even talks about during that time that people want to die and can't. Boy, that's a bad place to be. But just know that we're not in the tribulation period. When you go back through the Bible and you look at each time that the Lord wanted to send his judgment upon the world, he removed his people. Or, you know, with Noah, he removed Noah and his family. He placed them in the ark. Then you talk about Lot and his family. When he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he removed his people. And so I believe, in my opinion, that when the tribulation period starts, we as the church and believers will not be here. Let's look at verse number 33. Luke chapter 21. It says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. 
I love what Psalms 138 verse 2 says. Psalms 138 verse 2. It says, I will worship you towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. This is how seriously the Lord takes his word. We can bet everything that we have on the promises of the Lord being fulfilled. The Bible teaches us that the promises of God are yes and they are amen in Christ Jesus. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. It states, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Listen, one thing that you and I can be assured of is that the word of God is true. You can compare it throughout history. You can put any other religious book against it. It's the greatest all-time selling book in the history of the world. Listen. There is nothing like the word of God. If you want to know what's going on around you, if you want to know what, what our God is like, he is in the volume of the book. And you need to be in the word of God on a daily basis and a consistent basis to where, you know, you're reading and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to, to minister to your heart. There is nothing like the word of God. Verse number 34, Luke chapter 21. But take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down with crowds and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. And so what Jesus is telling us, he's instructing us, say, hey, always be ready. Always anticipate my return because you don't know when it's going to happen. Then he goes on to say, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. And then he says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, verse 37, and in the daytime he was teaching in a temple, but at night he went out and stayed on a mountain called Olivet. Then early in the morning all the people came to him in a temple to hear him. I want to talk about to watch and pray. All throughout the Gospels, we see where Jesus instructed the disciples and instruct us as well is that we are to watch and that we are to pray. Over in the epistles, the apostle Paul instructs us that we are to watch and that we are to pray. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 through 14, it says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. How timely if that, is that a word not only for the Corinthians in their day, but the Bible is still relevant. It's a timely word for us. And I, I, I would suggest that you put this to, to memory. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, but all that you do be done with love. Watch and pray. For those of you who know me, you know that I do not drive because I have a vision problem. And so everywhere I go, I have to catch a ride. Someone has to pick me up. And so you know what? As I relate that to spirituality, number one, I'm always ready when somebody's coming to pick me up. They don't have to wait on me, right? I'm ready to go. I'm looking out the window and I'm anticipating that they're going to be there at the time that they suggested. And it's the same thing with our Lord. He can come back at any time. Once again, the only thing that we're waiting for on God's prophetic timetable is the rapture of the church. How many of you are actively waiting and thinking that the Lord can come back at any moment? Because he can. You know, and the Bible says he doesn't count slackness that we count it slackness. You know, he, he wishes that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. But are you ready? You know what? I'm ready if he comes for the rapture, and I'm also ready if he calls my number and he calls me home. Listen, I always heard it said, if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. And that's my encouragement to, to, to the body of Christ today. Make sure that you're ready. How can you make sure that you're ready? Number one, you have to place your faith and trust in him as Savior. You have to repent of your sins. And that word repent means that you turn away from your sins and that you live righteously. That you're, you're in the word and you're reading the word and you're living 
our faith out loud. James said, just don't be hearers of the word, deceiving yourselves, but be also doers of the word. Listen, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And they're watching us to make sure that our, that our actions and our speech matches what the Bible teaches. And that's the problem that we have in the world, is that there are not enough of us who are living godly lifestyles. Listen, we want to supplement God's word with, you know, world philosophies. No. We're to live our faith according to the word of God. And so, therefore, make sure that you watch and make sure that you pray. Listen, as we talked about early in our lesson, Jesus had 12 friends. One was a devil. When he was on the cross, only out of his three closest friends, only one stood near. And so, listen, once again, there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Sometimes you're going to have to make those phone calls to your friends and you can't get a hold of them. Listen, don't bypass the Lord. Watch and pray. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. And he loved you and I while we were at our very worst. There's nothing that you can do to make him love you any less, and there's nothing that you can do to make him love you any more. He loves you and I because he loves us, because he loves us. Listen, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear because what's going on around us has not caught our God by surprise. He's fully aware of every situation. He's fully aware of everything that's going on with you. And so be blessed. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms. I love you. To my mom, I love you. And remember, I love you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. We'll see you here online next week as we tackle Luke chapter 22. God bless you. Have a great day and an awesome week.